Good afternoon, this is Wayne again, Digging Diesel. I have a quick project today, hopefully it's fairly quick, but uh, I'm tired of lugging around those five gallon diesel jugs. Um, they work great, I mean, they're super convenient, they're small, uh, you can run back and forth, but where the convenience ends is when you have to fill up your tractors, excavators, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with a 50 gallon drum today. I picked it up on Marketplace for about $10, so pretty inexpensive. I have some leftover steel laying around. So I'm gonna try to put something together where I can just put it on a trailer, take 50 gallons out to the property, and put an electric pump on it so it's super convenient to be able to fill everything up. And it'll be a lot quicker in that sense as well. So let's take a look here and get started. The problem with these five gallon jugs, first of all, they pour slow. They're not super convenient in that sense. And then also the weight of them. I know in my TYM, the fill nozzle for the tank is pretty high up. It's probably four foot or so on the back of it. And when you're holding up 35, 40 pounds worth of diesel, and it's taken four or five minutes for it to empty out, it gets kind of heavy. So now what I'm working on today is setting up a platform to put it on. I have some three by three inch steel down there. It's an old platform that I had a water tank on, and then I have some plate steel that I'm gonna cut to fit. Uh, main purpose for the plate steel is I wanna be able to get a forklift under here. So there's enough space under here I'm going to have a six inch overhang here and then I'm going to have a six inch overhang here as well. And then I'll end up welding it on and I'll also put some rebar here at all four corners just to make sure that there's support so this 55 gallon drum doesn't tip over. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm marking a line right at the six inches, which is going to be at the edge of the frame that I have below here. And the reason why I'm doing this is that way I have a guide to be able to grind, get it down to raw steel. This is an older piece of metal that's been sitting on the side of my shop, so at this point it's pretty rusty, uh, but I wanna make sure I get down to the raw steel so I get good adhesion when I do weld it. I have the plate all cut to size now, have everything ground down so it's a nice clean metal surface, that way I can get good penetration with my welder. My MIG welder is actually out of argon, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this little Amazon special stick welder. It'll do the job. Thing is pretty handy, to be quite honest. I can use it on my electric generator uh, for welding fence posts, things like that. So I haven't had too many complaints with it. Uh, you just got to keep the temperature cranked up on it. So let's get to welding. Get this metal stuck to that frame. I finished welding up the platform for the 55 gallon drum. Main reason I went with steel is I wanted something that was gonna last and also be sturdy enough that I can use the forklift to lift it up and down out of my trailer. Ultimately, it's gonna be transferring back and forth. I'm gonna be putting it on the trailer anytime that I do need to fill it up just to take it to the station. And then when I bring it back, I'm gonna put it into my storage container just to keep it out of the weather. So here's the platform. I showed you originally that I took some old plate steel and just welded it onto that 3x3 steel box frame. Um, and then what I did is I just used some old scrap rebar and they're about 24 inches long so they'll go about halfway up the 55 gallon drum. What I'm going to do to protect it because my only concern is if these will rub through the plastic. If you have a steel drum it probably wouldn't be an issue uh, but with the plastic I need to get an extra layer of protection. So I'm going to get some pool floaties or pool noodles, cut those to size, cover all of these and I think that will do the trick for me. Here's the pump that I purchased off of Amazon. I'll put a link below uh, if you're interested in doing this project as well. It was $85, it's a 12 volt pump. It came with the pickup tube, the actual filler nozzle, as well as I think it's 10 feet of actual hose. So that's gonna be more than enough for me. And then the pump itself, I'm gonna have to find a way to mount it to the top of the barrel, whether I do a metal bracket or a wood bracket. Uh, we'll figure something out on here. The kit came with an inch and a quarter pickup tube. There's no real adapter for it to get down into the tank because these thread on right here and they are threaded in here as well, but not really designed for this purpose. So what I'm going to do is use a step bit, drill a hole here down to the inch and an eighth, which is going to be a pretty snug fit. We'll give it a test shot through here to see how tight it is. Uh, but realistically, once it is in there, I'm going to go ahead and use RTV sealant to fill up the hole here because that's going to be a little more resistant to the oil and the fuel 
and I think that'll give us a nice watertight seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out at an inch and an eighth, and we'll see how she looks. Perfect, exactly what I wanted. Super, super snug. RTV sealant will just be secondary to this, just in case you end up keeping it outside where there is weather. You wanna make sure that water doesn't get into here. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with RTV sealant. Go ahead and put the lower screen on here, drop it in the tank, and then I will figure out what to do with the um, actual pump itself. Let's see how I'm gonna mount that. What I'm gonna do now is measure the depth. I wanna make sure that I get more than enough. 36 inches is right here, so that should be plenty. Uh, when it comes to the tubing, past that. That'll get plenty in time. The weight of this, it's going to hold down to the bottom of the tank. So let's go ahead and put the hose pipe on here. Here's that lower screen. Now there's a hose sticking out of the middle of it. You can't put the spanner wrench on here. To tighten it up, so going to be going by hand. While I'm waiting for that RTV sealant to dry, I'm going to go ahead and connect all the hardware here. The hose does come with an O ring on here already, so I'm not going to worry about putting any pipe tape on here. It should be tight as far as leaks go. So, go ahead and snug this up and then I'll connect it on the pump side. On the pump itself, you have your inlet and outlet, so this will be the side going into the actual 55 gallon drum. And as far as the fuel hose goes, that's going to be on the outlet side here. Now for the pickup tube, it does come with this brass nipple. Again, has the o-ring. Go ahead and get this threaded on. What I did is I cut a bracket out. Looks like an L on each side, which I cut from the purl and just kind of knocked off the excess here and went widthwise. What I'm going to do is take the short edge here, and I'll show you up on the barrel. I'm going to go ahead and arch this to match the actual barrel itself. And this is going to act as a bracket because on the barrel here it has a lip and what I'm going to do is contour this to go around that lip and I'm going to do one on each side and then what I'm going to use is probably a 2x4 or a 2x6 and I'm going to run it across the length here and then what I'll do is I'll screw this bracket onto the edge of that 2x4 and then I can mount the pump to the 2x4 makes it where it's removable later, but I think it should be enough to keep it nice and tight. So we'll give it a shot. If it works, it works. If not, we'll go back to the drawing board and figure out something else. I wanted to show you the lip that's underneath here. I'd say it's a, at least a quarter of an inch. So, so I think it should be plenty to hold the bracket on there. I just finished grinding the contour off and that's a good fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other one on the other side get that 2x4 or 2x6 cut to size, screw it together and see how tight it holds. Went ahead and brought the pump up here now. I'm gonna go ahead and tie that down. We just finished doing the set screws under here. I think placement wise, this looks good just because the way the hose is laying here while I'm waiting for that RTP sealant to dry. Tomorrow, I'll probably cut this a little bit shorter but that'll line up perfectly on this nipple back here. So I go ahead and snug that up and that's on that inlet side. So I got a couple of backer board screws. I'm gonna go ahead and screw those in here, get this all set in, and then we'll move on to an L bracket that I'll put here so I can hang this hose from it. The last thing I'm gonna do here is I have a oversized L bracket. What I'm gonna do is screw that to the wood. I need to ground down these edges just to make sure that they don't punch a hole in the side of the hose but this is going to be so I can wrap the hose and then put the actual fill nozzle have it something to hook to up and off the ground I think this will be perfect I think that'll work well for traveling only thing I might consider is just getting a cap over this just for the trips back and forth to the fuel station just to make sure I don't get any debris in here but besides that I think it looks great. I'm being a little impatient, still waiting for that RTV sealant to dry all the way, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I have five gallons here of diesel. I'm gonna pour it in just to test everything. Um, once I confirm that everything works, then I can go ahead and put it on the, the actual base and load it up on the trailer and fill it up all the way. So let's get filling. This is exactly what I'm talking about as far as it's kind of awkward when you fill it up and for how slow this goes. I'm going to rest it on there, make it a little easier on myself. Okay, I have this little tractor battery here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. It was on already. <laughs> Alright, let's 
Let's see if it'll prime up. I think the five gallons that I put in there was just barely enough to cover the bottom at this point. So the pickup's probably an inch and a half, two inches. So if it's drawing a little bit of air, that's probably the limitation. But ended up getting about a quarter tank at this point. But at least it tells me that it's working. So I just need to fill it up all the way and we'll give it a, a true test. But right now everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. I'm happy. It's been a couple of days now since I wrapped this up. It's been raining, I think three days at this point. Uh, I kept it under cover, that way the RTV sealant can finish drying at this point. It's it's good and firm. There's enough flexibility in there, which I think will be good the way this moves around when the pump is actually running. And the last little piece I needed to tidy up was on the rebar side supports here. I was going to do pool noodles, but I ended up going with some half inch copper uh, insulation. This is the stuff that you buy Home Depot, Lowe's, box stores uh, for winter time to protect all of your uh, PVC pipes, hoses, that sort of thing. Main reason I went that direction is because I built it fairly snug. I had less than a half inch between all of them, but that's what I wanted to assure myself that it wouldn't tip over. So those are on there now. Got the paint all done. The last little bit that I wanted to do was the actual bung wrench. So I ordered that $8 on Amazon. It just used a piece of Romex, just pulled one strand out of there, 14 gauge, tied that up. There was a hole already in the bucket here. I don't know if it's in all 55 gallon drums. Uh, I'm guessing so. I wouldn't imagine them just drilling it on this one. So now I can make sure that this gets nice and tight. That way I don't end up with any water, any other contamination in my diesel. So this is the final product. I'm happy with it. I think the only thing that I might suggest is if you have hard surfaces everywhere around your house and it's something that you're gonna need to push around, you might wanna weld a, a couple of wheels. I would probably put them on the bottom of the bar stock down here. And that would make it super easy for you to move this around on a hard surface. For me, it's gonna be out in the country basically it's going to be in the dirt rocks that sort of thing so forklift is really the only option for me unless i bought some big giant off-road wheels uh, but that would make it where it's pretty top heavy let me know what your thoughts are what would you do differently how would you improve it what would work best for you for me this was really just a matter of keeping it low cost but reaping the benefit of having a significant amount of diesel fuel out at the property the motivating factor for me was just cost savings uh, the vivor containers they cost over 500 dollars. this all in with the wrench pump everything was 105 dollars. that doesn't include the scrap still but that was something i had laying around you could do this on a pallet you could do this on just scrap wood for that matter um, but realistically, I mean, that's a huge savings for something that is going to last just as long as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on the next project.